Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the MCDFNL footy preview for another week. Round 15, the penultimate round of the home and away season coming up this weekend. And, of course, the footy preview brought to you by Bendigo Bank, as it is every week, our fantastic naming rights partners, as you can see on the footy in front of us. Sam Gowers joins me once again. Of course, Sean Kelly. Sam joins me once again, our co-host for the week. Mate, welcome back. Thanks, mate. Glad to be back. Always good to have you here. Let's jump straight into it, though, because we've got a huge round of football action coming up in the second last round of the year, starting out at Lexton on Saturday afternoon with Lexton taking on Avoca. Avoca have been okay in the second half of the year, but they're coming up against the Lexton side that have barely missed a beat all season. They've won 13 in a row. They've got Darren Jolly kicking goals for them up forward as well, and it looked like they're really starting to peak at the right time of the year. Yeah, like you said, Avoca have improved this, in this second half of the year, but it's hard to see them knocking off Lexton. Lexton's probably uh, behind the bar as a team, uh, competition's second in-form team, so mm. I think the Tigers will get over the line pretty easy in this one. Yeah, Tigers for mine too. I like the way they use the ball off half-back, especially when they get guys like Lockie Murray, Jimmy Templeton floating back and really giving a chop out there and really setting up their play from there, so I reckon that's what's going to give them the edge against Avoca this weekend. Denali taking on Campbell's Creek at the Ledio Reserve. This is a huge game in the context of the season, Sam Gowers. Campbell's Creek in eighth spot at the moment. They're a game ahead of Harcourt. They lose this one. They're in danger of missing the finals after being in the top eight seemingly all season. Yeah, we know Campbell's Creek aren't great on the road, and this is out at Denali's home mm. turf. That being said, I think Creek's probably just got a little bit too much class. Joel Smith's back in the side in recent weeks. Yep. Adam Pollock's kicking goals. Sean Smith's kicking goals. And I can't see the Eagles stopping them. The Eagles haven't been too bad again in the second half of the year. They've been improved. Jesse Olsen kicked four goals in the first quarter last week against Harcourt before they shut him down. If he gets loose, that could be a really good spur for Denali. And I think Denali can really give this a shake. I'm going to fall short of them saying that they can win it just because of, obviously, the way that the seasons have gone. But it would leave the competition right open if Denali were to win this and it would make for an extremely interesting round 16. That's all I'll say on that. Moving ahead, and good to see you just chiming in with your 20 cents worth there. Harcourt taking on Carisbrook, another big, big game, of course. Harcourt basically can't really afford to drop any more games this year. Maybe this one, depending on how it works in round 18, but they can really set themselves up for a finals tilt if they beat Carisbrook this weekend. Easier said than done, though, because Brook are in huge, huge form at the moment. Liam Cunningham, in particular, live wire in front of goals at the moment, has moved himself up to second on the goal-kicking table. Yeah, Carisbrook probably started the season a bit more slowly than they would have liked, but this second half of the year from the Redbacks has been super impressive. Liam Cunningham, Cole mm. Ross-Collar, Put Matt Bilton back in the side. Yep. Jackson Bowen's recovered from injuries. Yep. Can't see Harcourt getting over the line here. Yeah, look, I can't either. Harcourt obviously doing some very good things at the moment. They've got some firepower up forward themselves, but you just think Carisbrook, with the way that they're going at the moment and the form that they're in, are probably going to be a bit too hard to stop on the day. <laughs> Navar taking on Molden at Navar this week as Sam just soils his trousers after we get the yearly inclusion of the air horn. Do you like that one? Yeah, it scared the uh, Jesus out. We actually just had a look at that one. In We'll have a look at it in slow motion in a minute as well after we talk about Navar taking on Molden because this, I feel, is going to be a pretty one-sided game out at Navar as well. Obviously, the undefeated reigning premiers taking on Molden at the moment. It's going to be one-sided. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, Navarra will be looking to uh, just boost their percentage at the top of the ladder here. Uh, can't see Molden getting within anywhere near. No, neither can I. Let's have a look at that slow motion footage though. And of course, our regional general manager just decided to open the door of his office. Rookie mistake, not locking that door, but come in with the air horn. Let's have a look at the slow mo because Sam Gow has nearly jumped out of his skin. Oh, fantastic information there. Good work, Sammy. Well done. I think I've just kind of played it with a reasonably straight bat, knowing that such a thing could happen. And Very professional. Has the happened man, in the past. The so man in charge of the league there. Talbot taking on Natty Bialaba this weekend, a game that you will be, of course, a big part of. Well, not this game, but you'll be in more of the 12 o'clock yes, game. as we mention every week. As yes. we mention every week. But really important game for Talbot as well, because they can't afford to drop another game really going forward. If they were to drop this, they then face Trentham next week with their season on the line and Harcourt taking on Molden. Huge, huge day for Tolbert, but Natty in pretty good form at the moment. Yeah, super important game for Tolbert in terms of uh, stitching up a final spot, but I can't see them getting over the Swans. Natty's been in pretty good form this week. 
Jack Kennedy's back into the side after a hand injury, uh, which gives them a boost down back. Yep. So, yeah, I think the Swannies here. Yeah, the Swannies, I think, will just have too much run for Tolbert on the day. Newstead taking on Trentham. Newstead have been wobbly in recent weeks as well, but Trentham, after an impressive start to the season, have fallen off the pace a little bit. And despite Newstead's worries in recent weeks, you'd think that they should be have enough to get over the line today at home. Yeah, I think Ross Smith will have told the boys at Newstead this week that they've got to have a big win here, got to mm. boost that percentage to try and stay in fourth spot. And, yeah, I think they'll do that with ease. They take on Lexton in the last round of the season. Natty Biella have got Campbell's Creek next week as well. If Natty have two big wins and Newstead get tipped over in one of these games, then there is a chance that Natty can finish inside the top four. So you're right, percentage it will play a big part of it. Natty's percentage is superior to Newstead's, I believe, at the moment. So it's going to be a very interesting week to see what's happening there. And then on Sunday, it is Say No to Violence round here in the MCD FNL and our marquee game for that is is the Maribyrnong Derby between Royal Park and Maribyrnong Rovers. A fantastic initiative by the Central Goldfield Shire and the Maribyrnong Rotary, which the MCD FNL are getting on board with. Say no to family violence around. you see each of the players wearing a white armband throughout the weekend in each of these games. And this is the marquee game because Royal Park taking on the Rovers. Bushy are in the finals for the first time in how long? About 10, 13 years or something like that. Maybe even longer. Could be even longer. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're just going to run over the top of the Maribyrnong Rovers on the weekend. We know that these games are fiercely competitive no matter where the teams are on the ladder. Yeah, I'd say probably the biggest rivalry in the, in the league. Uh, yep. Always fiercely contested and Rovers will want to get themselves up and provide a really good contest here. But I think Bushy will want to finish the season off strong and get a victory here. Yeah, I think you're right too. Just a quick scan over the list and make sure we haven't missed any games this week and just have to do some, some editing and chuck them back in like we had to a couple of weeks ago. There's a trade secret for you. Looks like we've got them all covered on what's going to be another huge week of football and netball action. Within the MCD FNL, it's been a pleasure bringing you the MCD FNL footy preview for this week. We're going to start to ramp things up in the next couple of weeks, of course. We've got next week's show, then we've got the finals happening, so we might get some special stuff out for you. Get the guests back in here, get some good footage out there, and of course we will see Sam Gowers again every week leading into the finals. Thanks for joining us once again. Always a pleasure, mate. No more air horns for the rest of the year. Though. Yeah, you can That's go and it. change those trousers now. That's it. That's, that's it. it. We'll make sure every door is locked and yeah. bolted and everything. So that's been everything on the MCDF Now Footy Preview this week. Brought to you by Bendigo Bank. We'll see you again next week.